Hey, Michael, did you uh, did you watch this game? Because I mean, I, I, I know of you course, really did Absolutely. college basketball like that. And I mean, a, a number no, one no, seed advanced to the I title that. game. I know that's boring to you. Uh, so well, I, I don't know. Well, you know, you, yeah. You, does it, should we yeah. should we pivot to another topic? I, I don't know. Not know. That you're, no, it's this, funny. Did you, yeah, you you got you okay. got jokes today. I'm just checking. You got jokes today. No, I, I, that's, yeah. not, that's not jokes. That's facts. But let me just point out. That's facts. Can I just I mean, point I mean, out everybody, that. You, you do not like the NCAA tournament. And, oh, can and I point out? I don't like, the, enjoy I don't like the false narrative of the NCAA tournament. Can I, can I, can I point out? Ooh, ooh. Uh, when we had the list, we had the list. We may not have it anymore. We had each of the 68 teams in the NCAA tournament. Remember that? And I said, ain't nobody below 11 go win this thing. Oh, I was a little too generous. Uh, oh, we got, oh, what, well, Mike? I can't believe it. Oh, wow. We have the top two teams. Oh, my God. Okay. The top two you know teams I like? oh, are playing. Like, I'm just so dug in on this take. It's like, you, would, you wouldn't have it any other way, okay? And there were plenty of Cinderella stories, okay? Hey, the clock strikes midnight for all Cinderella's. The clock so struck midnight. Because a Cinderella 16. doesn't win the championship, Stop. usually, doesn't mean that Cinderella's don't have a good time at the ball while they're there. This has been a phenomenal tournament. Ball? All I want to say, all, all jokes aside. What is aside, the ball? All jokes aside, all I want to say. Round of 32? All I want to say. That's the ball? All I want to say is how appreciative I am. And I, and I mean this sincerely. How appreci appreciative I am of everybody involved with putting this event on. I, listen, I, I was messing with you just now. I, I'm not the biggest college basketball, you know, freak there is. Like, I don't, I don't eat, sleep, and breathe college basketball. Um, I, I enjoy it around tournament time. I don't even fill out a bracket because I get too attached to it, and I'm like, why am I filling this out? I don't know what I'm talking about anyway, so I just do without it. Um, and I, I wasn't heartbroken that they didn't have it last year, but... I guess, again, I love quoting the immortal words of uh, Jeffrey Osborne from LTD. It takes separation to bring appreciation. And now that we have the tournament back, I'm like, man, like, I, I get why people, why people think it's the biggest thing going in American sports. And this tournament, again, to put it on under these circumstances, and, and let's be honest here, there was criticism, and we were probably even a part of it, criticism for trying to yeah. even have this tournament with a pandemic still going on. And yet there was only one uh, forfeiture slash no contest, I believe. Uh, and, and to have a successful and exciting women's tournament and to now about to you know, cap off a successful and exciting men's tournament despite the circumstances is really just a testament to everybody from the unpaid players, and we never say it, all the way up to the administrators. And the reason I'm in such a thankful mood, the reason I have such an attitude of gratitude in particular, because mm -hmm. I... I I started on this track earlier in the show, Michael, and I'll just bring it back for purposes of this. So really, this weekend was really an amazing sports weekend. Um, and so Friday night, uh, we watched the UConn-Arizona game as a family. Saturday night, Mason and I, because it was late, try to usually get him into bed early as best we can, but we stayed up, just the two of us, to watch Gonzaga UCLA and to experience that moment with my son I'm not sure how you watched it but to experience it with my son and his play-by-play -play and my play-by-play -play. and I mean it was one of those moments we just jumped off the sofa together like oh, oh, oh yeah. like just going crazy obviously no dog in this fight I mean when when Johnny Juzang when he got that put back and to send it well to tie it I'm like oh yes double overtime double overtime and then right. I was like, yes, we get more basketball. Because that, that was a game that deserved to go on. And then when Jalen Suggs drained that shot, to experience an all-time instant classic moment next to my son was something I'll never forget. So I appreciate the moment that Jalen Suggs, Gonzaga, and UCLA, what a remarkable Cinderella run by a freaking 11 seed. Now, I know you don't consider UCLA a Cinderella, given the fact that they got, what, 11 titles or whatever it is. You know, right. still... First four to on the doorstep of the national though. championship game is an incredible run, and they showed out. They were the Arizona of the men's semifinal. They were they 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 get every bit as much respect from me as I give Arizona for how Arizona acquitted itself in the women's final. 
UCLA was phenomenal. So to experience that alongside Mason was just really special on a personal note, Michael, because yeah. and you and I talked about this privately, sports over the last few years, I, I've kind of fallen out of love with sports in general for a variety of complex reasons that I am not going to get into and waste time with now, uh, just jaded in general in many respects. So it was just fun to just have something be fun and pure and wholesome. And I know it's the NCAA and it's college athletes, so there's nothing really pure about it. Yeah. But you understand what I'm getting at. Like a great I sports do. moment with my son. And then yesterday, to put a bow on in the past to you, right before Versus, and it ended right on time, we all sat down as a family. Because, you know, I got two hoopers now. I got two, t two kids playing basketball. Both my oldest are basketball players. And we all sat down as a family and watched uh, the Arizona-Stanford final last night. So just such a great weekend. But to experience that with Mason was really just something I'll never forget. And hopefully he never forgets. Like, where were you? I was sitting with my dad. That's it. Jumping up and down, yelling when Jalen Suggs, future NBA superstar Jalen Suggs, etched his name uh, in March Madness lore. Look, look, Mike, I, I think that's great. See, like, you never forget those moments. Like, I, I had that, I had something similar when uh, the United States women, the women's national team, won their, their most recent World Cup. And we all watched it as a family. That, okay, that's one. We all watched it as a family, but even better. And this is what I love. My sons and my daughter, after that game, went outside and played soccer, and they're, and they're calling themselves different members of the team. See, that's the stuff. Yep, that's that it. is good. That is that's good. Yeah. And you can see the impact yep. immediately. But you're absolutely right. Watching that with Mason is something that he'll never forget. And something you'll never forget. I actually watched it with Oni. I was watching it on Saturday night, and I was just expect for a while. I was expecting. I probably watched it for a half, thinking, "Okay, when is when is Gonzaga just going to take control of this game?" <laughs> then it was clear that it wasn't going to happen. I was conflicted watching the game back and forth. Great game. Okay, so my 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 conflict had nothing to do with the game itself. The UCLA athletic director. Let me give him a shout out here, Martin German. Martin Germain, he's a first-year athletic director at UCLA. He's a friend of mine. He was at BC, young guy, brother, uh, one, of the, uh, one of the few uh, African-American athletic directors of a program like this in the country. So I've been texting with him. You know, every, every time UCLA gets to win, I'm like, hey, all right, Martin, good job. Next one, next one. So I really was, on one hand, I wanted Martin uh, his team mm -hmm. to keep going forward. On the other hand, I kind of do want to see an undefeated basketball team. I mean, for the first time Michael, in, in almost I, in one almost of us on years. this show, one of us on one of us on this show, one of us was not alive the last time there was an undefeated. That's right. I know one of us was alive. Men's team. No, I said one of us was not alive. 1976, right. I believe. Right. I was born in 1979. So I have never seen an undefeated men's college basketball team. No, seen the ladies do it. It would be great to see. I've never seen a men's college team do it. And you know, honestly, I don't even remember. I don't remember. I had to go back and look at Indiana, the '76 team, just to familiar. I knew the names, but I needed to familiarize myself with like their top three, top four players, and like some of their matchups and who they beat in the. Oh, semifinals. I, I really don't remember watching Indiana basketball. So I've seen some teams come close, and you have too, uh, only to fall short, you know, a step away or a couple of steps away. I'd like to see it. Well, actually, sounds like, I, listen, listen yeah. to Jordan, it sounds like it's not going to happen tonight. Yeah. Well, well let, me, let me, let me, I'm going to come back to that in one second. But before we talk about tonight's final, which again, tough act to follow. Um, tough acts to follow. We, I just got to show some love, more love to UCLA. Yo, Juzang is a bad boy. Yeah. Like, yo, he was nice with it. I'm talking, I mean, you're talking about smooth? Can get, I mean, could get his own shot from wherever he wants? Man, I was so impressed. Really, UCLA in general, I just, I know they had a lot of close games, and it was like, there was a, some of the numbers would suggest that it was fluky. Bro, they they belonged in a big way, and I'm I'm I felt for them losing that game, especially the way that they did to lose um, like that. But ooh, 
but the general but the general fan in me if you will like the, the, this is what we want like we got we, we got come on now i mean seriously like we talk about cinderella's all we want seeing the two best teams play for the national title not just the two teams that made it but the two best teams all year is is a dream matchup some are calling it the game of the century um and so that's, unfortunately that's, as they it, say as they, as the cliche goes as the cliche goes somebody had to lose that game but bro you see yeah. man Tip of the cap to them. As far as tonight, though, game, I want to pose game this of this century. Game of this. Well, this century ain't that long. I, I was I'm that saying, long. yeah, game, game of the 21st century. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. You know. Anyway, um, I, I, I'm I, just. I, you know, okay. Here, here's what people the thing. say. Just what people say. I know. I know. You asked me the question. I know one of your pet peeves is like odd <laughs> anniversaries. Since. This is like the seventh anniversary yeah. or ninth anniversary. Yeah. Yeah. Or yeah, not, third since anniversary. Yeah. Two, yeah. not since 2016, mm-hmm. not since that kind of stuff. Five years ago. Yep. Mm-hmm. Yep. I just, I, I hate, I hate when people, <laughs> the game of the century and stuff like that. <laughs> and it's not, it's never even thoughtful. It's never thoughtful. It's just like, hey, we saw a great no, game this weekend. That's it. And I saw a headline. We had a headline coming in. Uh, best college basketball what? game ever. Stop. Shut up. Just shut up. No, it's not. It's not the best college game you've ever seen. Is it the best game you've ever seen? It's not. Is it the best college game you've ever seen? Probably not. I mean, come on. It's, if, 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 if felt, it felt, I mean, it felt as okay. good as, it felt as good watching it. I enjoy, okay, how, I don't know how you define the best game ever. Okay, best, but best that madness. That was as much fun. Okay, best buzzer beater. Okay, sure, best buzzer beater. Okay, I, I stand corrected. Yeah. That was as much fun as I've ever, best no, but people, some people are calling sure. it the best game ever. No, but some people are calling it the best game ever. Some people are indeed calling the semifinal 93-90 Gonzaga over UCLA 2021 as the best ever. Uh, this, it, CBS has their list. And yeah, they still got, see, they got Leitner. I was going to say, and it's not even the best I mean, buzzer beater because number three or two or one. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think all those, those are, that's appropriate. Those top three, that's a pro- I, I can't I can't hate on any of them. Yeah, you, I mean a, a national championship buzzer beater is hard to top. And um, by the way, I would, I would Villanova, flip-flop. North Carolina, I would that was a great game. That was a great. I would flip flop. Yeah, it was. I would flip flop two and three. And and I, I would still keep Christian Leitner above Suggs only because it's it's, it's Kentucky Duke, it's Leitner's Grand Hill. It, it's hard for me to move that one out. I don't want to be yeah. too much of a prisoner at the moment. Having said all that, though, if I enjoyed that game as much as any game I could remember, look, I, I, I am not qualified enough to definitively tell you if it's the best game ever. I'm not, I don't even need, I don't feel like I need to do that. I don't feel like anybody needs to do it. Does it really matter? I mean, it's like, it was one of the greatest games I've ever seen. It was That's a great enough. moment. It was, it was, and you know what? it was that, not, not just moment, but the game, it was fun. With Drew Timmy. Bro, I like, I, bro, I, speaking of, speaking of to your, you, do you like Drew Timmy as much as I do? Because he seems like, you know, yeah. like Drew Timmy is like the perfect, if there is a shirts and skins game, Drew Timmy is always skins. I just know it. He's right. always skins. He just is that dude that you just don't want to have to play against. I love Drew Timmy. That's right. I absolutely love his game. It was fun. And I don't, and I don't want to be the guy who takes away the fun, but I just got to do this. Gary, could you but, just call up my list? Just call up the list. Oh, Lord, you made a list. Oh, Lord. No, no, I'm saying the list that was already, I didn't make it. I didn't make the list. I was talking about the the top teams and the 68 teams in the tournament. And uh, I just wanted to see where we stand. You know, because it's, hey, March Madness, anything can happen. Cinderella. Hey. You know where we we stand. Look, uh, uh, top uh, teams are in. (laughs) No, no, this is so whack. This is such a bad take. It's like you, you say it like it's a bad thing. Why? This is the first. This is the first time, Michael. This is, okay. The year that I was born, if I'm not mistaken, was the last time we've had an undefeated team in the national title game, and that was Larry Bird's Indiana State. Larry Bird, excuse me, Indiana State team, 1979 against Magic. That was the last time we've had an undefeated team make it this far. So you can sit up here with your whack. So it ain't really about underdogs or Cinderella's overrated, it's not. And, and it ain't really. Clearly, it's not. Except UCLA at 44. So, so who would good. you rather? 
Who would you Who would you rather see in the game tonight? But besides, not about who I rather. You know what I rather. No, you know what I rather. Ways. No, you want to have it. No, I don't. No, I can't. Say Cinderella yes, can. don't this really happen. Do. But what? This is what I want to do. I want. Let me be the editor. Can I be the editor? Can, or let me suggest an editor. I don't. Uh, you know, because it's not. You know, I'm NBC. That's CBS. Okay, you do, go and do your thing. Bring an editor in. Mm -mm -mm. Never say Cinderella again. Never say anything can happen. Never talk about this tournament as if uh, Norfolk State can win it or Drexel can win it. They can't. Stop it. It's billions of dollars. This is big money. You don't want to pay the kids. You don't want to have equal treatment for men and women. Uh, okay, so just stop with, the, stop with the lies and just call it what it is. It's a, it's a big money tournament. And usually the blue buds, blue bloods of college basketball wind up in a championship game. Yes. Other than that, okay, fine. And if you if you keep it real with me, I'll enjoy the tournament. Just don't lie to me. I hate it. Just don't lie to me and just make it make this tournament something that it's not. Nope. You know, I'm not even okay. I'm not even gonna argue with that no more. I don't even know why I, why I brought it up. Yeah, I don't have to argue. I don't even know why I brought it up. I'm right, because I'm right. No, because it's like, no, it's because I'm all right. right. All right. I'm okay. And you're wrong. Because you're too young. You're too young to understand it. So as far as tonight goes, I pose the question this way. <laughs> does does, does Jalen Suggs' moment, is it reduced to a footnote if Gonzaga doesn't finish the job? Yes. Like, how... Like, oh, it's that simple, huh? That doesn't even feel yeah. good to ask. Doesn't even feel good to ask whether or not one of the greatest games, one of the greatest buzz beaters we ever saw is, is loses some of its significance if they lose an international championship game and don't finish yeah. defeated. Yeah. See, I don't like that. I don't like that. I it's, know you don't, it's, but... It's, it's, it's reality, and I, and I realize it's reality, but it's an unfortunate reality, don't you think? I don't know, Mike. Not really. I mean... The, the the big draw, why everybody is, is going to be paying attention to this, you see an undefeated team in any sport, an undefeated team with an opportunity to close out that season with one more victory, and then that puts you in a category where few people have ever gone, that's a big deal. And if you don't achieve that, then you go into that other category. Oh, they came so close, and they just missed it. Why, why do you think the uh, the angry old men of the 1972 Miami Dolphins have that toast every year when a team loses in the NFL because it's special to be undefeated. And, and if, if you get close to being undefeated and you fall short, that's what people remember. And, but here's the flip I side. I think that buzzer beater. Here's the flip side. <clears throat> Here I, we just talked about this in all seriousness. We talked about me. I'm six years old. I'm six years old. Six years old when Indiana wins the national championship. I don't. I don't even know if we had a TV when I was six. I don't know. I don't remember anything about it. But now here I am, 45 years later, looking up the 1976 Indiana Hoosiers because it's special. So here's the good. The good news for you, Gonzaga. You complete the deal. You'll never be forgotten. Jalen Suggs will never be forgotten. Mark Few never forgotten. This team. Special. Nobody will ever have to think, wonder how do you pronounce Gonzaga again. I'm telling you, this. I don't think. I don't think they're. This is I big. don't think they're forgotten. Regardless. See what, I, what what's I, what, what's happened is Gonzaga, long since, turned in their glass slipper. Like they're not a Cinderella. They're a national power. Those Cinderella days are over for them. If this right. were an actual Cinderella, then, regardless of what happens tonight. They'd be playing with house money, more or less. I, I, I'm uncomfortable with the idea of what, ha what we saw Saturday night. And this is why I intentionally started this conversation the way that I did, because I wanted to just really speak to what a special moment and what a gift we received, what a gift we all received this Easter weekend in the form of, of, of such dramatic theater. And I think... What happens, and, 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 and you see examples of it all the time when we're talking about players' legacy, whether we're talking about the, the significance of games. It's like, and I'm not trying to get too deep here, but, I, but I'm just trying to express my, how I feel about the stakes tonight. 
is I think we just we, we view sports through such a, a, a an absolute prism and perspective where it's like, you know, it doesn't matter if you don't win at all. Ricky Bobby, you ain't first, you last, right? And I just, I, I don't think they'll be forgotten. Or I don't think their season is a, a failure. And maybe, look, maybe they would say otherwise. Maybe Mark Few and, and Jalen Suggs and Drew Timmy, maybe they'd all be like, you know what? No, it is a failure. Like, it, does, it doesn't matter. Nothing we did for the previous 30-some-odd games matters because, you know, we, we lost. Man. We lost when it mattered. Come on. We, we came up come short on, again. Mike. Maybe that's how they're gonna look. Maybe that's how they're gonna look at it. I'm saying I don't like. I'm just saying, Michael. Maybe I'm just in a vulnerable state right now. So uh, you know, bear with me. I'm just saying I don't like that. If if they don't finish the job tonight against a number one seed in their own right in Baylor, one right up there with Gonzaga, one of the best teams in the country this year. If they don't finish it, then what we saw Saturday night is just like is that's, that's just a footnote. I mean, I asked the question knowing how I felt about it. It's just like, man, that just doesn't feel right. Well, it doesn't feel fair. I mean, like, because they, they did us a favor. It's, they did us a favor with that moment um, Saturday night. They did. Okay, so is it insignificant? No, it's not insignificant because we just talked about what a great game it is. A, a great game it was on Saturday. But that's not the, the number one thing for their season is at this point, the num number one thing is going undefeated. And obviously winning a national championship. That's one. And if they don't do that, everything else, you know, kind of feels like, yeah, that was cool. That was great. But we didn't finish it. Can you imagine? Just put yourself in a position. Uh, you're looking at it now. But can you imagine being 21 years old or 19 and you were one game away from a national championship and being undefeated and you don't get it? Yeah, I mean, that, oh, that's God, one of those no. things that... That thing, that, that can mess with you for a long time. Not to mess with your head for a long time. I hope they get it. I really do. Um, I, if I have to just be, uh, just be clear, I am rooting for Gonzaga. Oh, I'm tonight. rooting for it, too. Same. I want Gonzaga Same. to win. Nothing against Baylor. Honestly, for a couple I want of it reasons. to be a great game. One, I want to... And I want Gonzaga to win. Right. I, I, I want an undefeated national champion for the first time in my lifetime, second time in yours. And not just that, I don't want to have the conversation... Or, or people try to, you know, contextualize what we just saw Saturday night and only, you know, and, and, and diminish it because, well, they didn't really, they didn't win the championship. I mean, that list we put up a buzzer beaters, they weren't all cha in championship games. I mean, that moment will live on forever regardless. I like to think a team that has given us this run and gave us one of the greatest games we've ever seen, regardless of what happens tonight, I like to think that they wouldn't, just be cast aside as an afterthought in, in college basketball um, history. Uh, as we wrap this up, I do want to go back to one other point, which I thought was, he made a lot of good points. I mean, he was pretty definitive, Jordan was, that Suggs was the best player and, and worthy of the number one pick. But just how much college basketball needed Saturday night, men's college basketball. Because the, what's interesting, the women's game, conversely, I wanted to say this too, you know, what, what are the, talk about crazy stats. One of the craziest stats is that Gino Ariema is 11-0 in national title games and 11-10 in the Final Four. Like, he's lost... The, the, the UConn Huskies have lost their last four semifinals game, final games. Um, they've, had, they've had four different conferences win the last four championships. And obviously last year they didn't have a tournament. And it's the longest streak of non-repeat champions since Stewie and UConn ran off those four straight. Um, it wasn't that long ago, but it also wasn't that long ago we were talking about UConn as, quote-unquote, bad for basketball, bad for women's basketball. When yeah, I never believed that. All it did, I never believed that for a second. Me neither, because all it did, and we're seeing the fruits of this, was elevate uh, yes. the rest of the sport. To not only keep yeah. up, but to knock them off. And UConn's not going elevate, to be still a premier program. And for those, but they elevated those who weren't, who weren't ready. For those who weren't yeah. ready, they elevated them. And those who were there, they angered them. It was great. Yeah. It was good. So the women's game, despite what some antiquated administrators in the NCAA may want to believe, uh, the women's game may, has probably never been in a better 
place than it is right now in terms of talent, in terms of parity, in terms of profile, uh, in terms of just the quality of the product. So I, bringing that back to what Jordan said earlier, and I'm talking, I think I'm asking this to the right person, somebody who, you know, isn't really a fan of college basketball, admittedly. Um, do you, how much, how much does, does the men's game, how much does uh, men's college basketball, uh, after Saturday night, how much does it need another classic? How much does it need uh, a memorable championship game tonight? Does it need it for the health of the game the way Jordan uh, seemed to indicate? I don't think it can get it. I, you know, look, a classic game won't change it. I, I do expect a classic game. I want it. I want it to be close. I, I'd love you. Give me three over. Give me a three overtime classic. You know, 117 to 115. Give me another buzzer beater. But here's the, the, the difference between the men's game and the women's game is very simple. One and done. So we talk about college basketball. You talk about Lorenzo Charles and some of those guys and Grant Hill and, and Christian Leitner in 92. You didn't have one and dones. And I'm not saying basketball was better, but it was easier to identify with a team because you knew their personnel at least for three years, sometimes four. So Christian Leitner was the most hated guy in college basketball. Why? Because you got to see him a lot. Duke was winning all the time. They had back-to-back -back national championships in, in 91 and 92. Yeah, okay. Yeah, I, I, I know Duke. Uh, I, I know uh, Akeem Olajuwon. I know Five Slam Ajama. I know these guys. Now, in, in the men's game, okay, Jalen Suggs, they have a great classic, then he's going to be in the NBA next year. And then there's another group coming in. I think it's hard to really... Have some um, have some carryover yeah. with men's basketball. <laughs> I, I just, that, that's the way I look at it. We're in the women's game. Hey, I I know who's coming back. I know. Look, uh, Paige Becker's gonna be at UConn next year. Caitlin yeah. Clark's gonna be at Iowa it, next. Or year. maybe she shouldn't have to be at UConn. Yeah, I, yeah, they will. And I, and I get what you're that's saying. That's a different argument. And that, right. And that is a tra right. And, right. And that is a traditionalist way of looking at it. But I would say that I think what we saw Saturday was how beneficial most traditionalists, most purists, feel like the one-and-done has been to the detriment of college basketball. I would argue it's been uh, beneficial to college basketball. It's only a detriment Why? if you view it in the extreme and say, if you say, hey, you should have to go for four years if you go to college. But if you I are... I don't think that. I don't... If you are progressive... I don't, I don't think no, that. No, I'm not saying Let you do. Let me just be clear. No, I'm not saying you do. But if you're... Progr if I, know. You're prog I know. I know. I'm not saying you think that. I'm not saying you think that. But I think... If you're progressive enough to realize that these young people should have the right to take their talents to the NBA out of high school or should not have to stay in college for four years in order to get and play for free in order to get to the NBA, then without one and done, I look at it the other way. Without one and done, we don't have any of Jalen Suggs on the college level. Think about the, the number of great players who have blessed the college game with a year of their volunteer services on their way to the NBA where they didn't have to. And some guys are eschewing that route altogether and just doing the G League or overseas. But, like, the fact that we had Jalen Suggs for a season and for a tournament and got what we got out of him last night, to me, is, is great for college basketball as opposed to, well, let's, no one and done, just go straight to high school or, worse, forcing them to stay four years, which is... But I think, but I think, I think those are two... two. But, but I think those are two separate arguments. Look, I, I'm, I'm, all, I'm all for, you know, take whatever talent you have, take your talent and maximize it when you can. Uh, nobody is saying to some, some great kid, uh, some great saxophonist or a trumpeter at the Juilliard School of Music or Berkeley College of Music, hey, you, you know, you need to stay before leaving school. You need to stay for two years or three years before you go. No, you're 19 years old, 18 years old, and you can do your, and you can do your thing somewhere else. Uh, in the jazz world or hip-hop world, whatever it is, you go ahead and do it. And the same thing should happen uh, in, in, college, in, in high, from high school basketball players going to the pros. But it is easier, in my opinion, it's easier to identify with somebody who's in one place for three years as opposed to kind of like a revolving oh, yeah. door. No, I, I, I appreciate that. I appreciate that. By the way, that shot wasn't even the best thing that Jalen Suggs did. That, that block... Rebound, bounce pass sequence to Timmy for the dunking yeah. regulation. That was wow. that was that blew my mind. The, and it wasn't the even a foul. Was fantastic. It wasn't even a foul. That was nope. a great block. Nope. Was that a charge though? Real quick. Was All that right. a charge? Yes. 
That was a charge. He was feet set out of the restricted area. That was a charge. No question. What about the arm? No, um, I had a little bit too much movement for me. My son said that. My son said the same yeah. thing. So maybe I'm in the minority Mason's on that. right. Uh, hey, thanks for watching Brother from Another on YouTube. Make sure you hit subscribe before you leave and be sure to watch us 3 to 5 p.m. Eastern Time on Peacock. Appreciate you.